In many situations, where you need to animate hundreds of models, the best approach is not using keyframe animations. What you need is a shader. In this video, we recreate a spell from Naruto, creating a graph shader to animate snakes. The first thing we do is creating the environment of our scene. We import this awesome package from the asset store and we set it up in a new Unity URP scene. Also, we download Deidara. Deidara was a S rank missing name from Iwaga. Iwaga. And we rig it thanks to Mixamo. We download these animations one to cast the standard spell, one for an area effect spell and an idle standing pose. Since the video game has a unique and cool toon graphic style, we import and use our Zelda toon shader for all the materials. Once that the scene is ready, to start developing the Deidara spell, we need snakes. So we open Blender and we do our best to replicate it. Back in Unity, we create a new unlit graph. The first thing is to add a custom texture. So we add a public parameter of type texture2d and we connect it to a sample texture2d node. After connecting this node to the master node's color input, we obtain a textured snake. To achieve our animation, we need three main things a position node, a time node, and a mask. With the position node, we access directly to the mesh vertex or fragment's position. The RGB channel of this node represents the x, y, z coordinates relative to the chosen space. In particular, we use the object space that represents the vertex position relative to the mesh pivot. In other words, Thanks to this node, we can access directly to the vertex of the mesh and, in this case, move them. To access RGB values, we use a split node. We will work with the red channel, since this is the axis that allows us to achieve a serpentine movement. In Shader Graph, if you need to do an operation over time, you can rely on the time node. We multiply the time output for a custom vector 1 called speed. Then we add this value to what we call a mask. A mask is a layer that tells our shader which vertices to animate and which not. There are different ways to create a mask, for example using a black and white texture or vertices colors of a mesh. I'm going to use a UV mask. With this, you can choose which part of the mesh animate based on the UV unwrap. Back to Blender, we can see how we have unwrapped the snake, displaying it along the U axis. We want a different color for the eyes and the mouth, so we have moved these parts along the Y axis, always keeping their original horizontal position. We add a UV node in our shader graph and we connect it to a split node. As for the position node, the red channel represents the X axis of the UV map. We multiply the red channel value for a new vector1 parameter called frequency. And we add this result to the output value of the time per speed multiplication. Since we need to repeat the movement over time, all we need is a sign node. We now have a value between minus 1 and 1, so by multiplying it for a new vector 1 called amplitude, we increase or decrease the movement range. Now that we have obtained a value that continually changes between a custom range and refers to real vertex coordinates, we can add the output to the position node x-axis.
With a combined node, we recreate the vector and all we need to do is connect it to the master's node's vertex position. Back to the scene, we can see in the material our exposed values. Speed is how fast the snake moves along the x-axis. Frequency is how many times the scene wave occurs. And amplitude sets the movement range. Another cool thing is that we can exclude a part of the mesh from moving by using a smooth stepped node. We want to see the snake's head moving along the x-axis, but not following the scene wave rotation. So, by setting a range between 0.9 and 0, we exclude the last 0.1 percentage of the UV map, representing the head. The shader is almost finished. Now we create a particle system. We set the render mode and mesh under the renderer section, and we choose to use our custom material to render the particles. By playing with other parameters and enabling collisions, we obtain a good result. The only thing we don't like is that since snakes share the same material, they move in the same way. A little trick to avoid this is to enable custom data in the particle. Add a vector 1 that randomly changes between two numbers and pass it to the shader by enabling the custom vertex strings. As you can see, we can access this parameter from the z-axis of the UV coordinates. So, if we multiply this value for the result of the time per speed operation, each particle will be different. On button press, we play a character animation, and thanks to an animation event, we call a method to spawn particles. This is the final result. We have added a powerful version of the ability. What do you think of the project? Let us know in the comments below. Click the thumbs up, subscribe and come to say hi in our Discord server. These actions help us to reach a wider audience. Don't forget that the full project is downloadable from our GitHub page. Thanks for watching, bye!